bit of a quick one this evening. Um, fairly recently, with um, trying to commission the repeater, um, I have really struggled with, with uh, getting the filter to actually tune without uh, having access to some, you know, some pretty sophisticated equipment. I mean, I do have access to it, but I kind of wanted to approach this from um, from a different angle. I wanted to approach it from an angle where it could be just, you know, anyone that was was uh, looking at tuning repeater filters or or whatever, really. Anyway, um, this VNA was brought to my attention by Daniel Wall. I think hope I pronounced your name right there, Daniel. Um, he's a, um, a radio ham from Denmark. And he said, um, you know, don't muck about with the MRS VNA. Um, try this one. And this is uh, a device from D-Pace. Um, and it's fairly it's fairly complex um it's a really really nice vna basic vna sort of multimeter and this is kind of like uh, an rf engineer's sort of friend and, and this is for what you get in this little tiny package it's actually quite cheap however it is considerably more expensive than my vna that i have to hand which is just the mrs one however this has got much more depth uh, in the uh, in the, in the test now obviously I'm on a learning curve here so I'm not going to be an expert and tell you how this thing absolutely works but what I will tell you is the manual is absolutely horrid um, bearing in mind that this device costs around sort of like 1500-1800 quid this is the manual it's um, it's a few pages of folded a4 sort of uh, print from a from an inkjet or something um with a few sort of pictures and stuff in it with for sort of basic sort of tests but what it doesn't do is it doesn't really explain you know enough about the modes and uh, bits and pieces on on here um and it for me i just think that i'm spending a reasonable amount of money with this i expect a bit more from the manual however i did get by um, and with a little bit of help from from daniel as well setting this up it, it really was sort of slightly distressing at one stage i could have thrown it out the window however once i've actually got my head around this it's actually quite a simple device to use the basics of it are you need to set a centre frequency here, um, and that centre frequency is kind of is what sits in the screen. You then need to set the span, and that gives you the kind of the width of the screen. Then you need to set the mode. So you, if you want to, in this case, it might be um, we'll set the mode here. S21 is the one I use to test the um, the filter. So this will give you. Um, if, if I select that now, it gives you like a basically a spectrum analyzer kind of display, and then where the dips are, it actually you'll see the actual drop uh, down, and it, this you can scale it. Um, if I remember rightly, how did I do the scale? Um, the scale was around here somewhere. You could set the actual scale down so that it would actually. I think it was amp. Actually, I'm not sure. But it would set the, the 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 scale so you could then sort of see to the very bottom, and this made this very different to the MRS VN, uh, VNA, where the the MRS VNA did have the drop. But it was very slow. Everything was really really slow. And by the time you've made adjustment on the on the filter and the actual um, the device had done its next measurement pass. By the time you've you've got it in position, that everything had gone too far, and you just missed it. It was it was very difficult to kind of uh, use. This was much faster, and it it was um, it was very successful. It worked really really well. In fact, I used the S version of it, which worked absolutely perfectly. Um, if you want to sort of set the mode for something else, so. Typically, you'll be using, say, S21 or S11. Now, what S11 is, this will actually use the port 1. So, 
on S2021, sorry, yeah, S21, you basically transmit on one port and receive on another. And when you put it in S11, you're basically receiving on, on this side. And what this actually does is this, this will test for, you know, your SWR on an antenna or maybe test a load or something like that. Um, and down the side here, you can actually set the format. So we can set the format here and we can set it for phase, return loss, a VSWR, Smith chart or impedance. Um, so we're going to set this for SWR for the quick explanation. Um, and down the side here, we've got the SWR. And if I start the, the thing to run, um, it won't actually do anything because it's reading infinity at the moment. But what this will do, it will give you the SWR. You'll see the, the actual uh, SWR curve. Um, now, if I were to set the mode into, um, we'll set it into, sorry, S11 format, and we'll put it in a Smith's chart. You can see now you've got a nice Smith's chart, and it will actually, you can see, you know, the, the actual SWR is sort of sitting um, basically at in, infinity. Um, Oh, it's saying there's an issue anyway. Um, so, um, yeah, there you go. So the actual, um, let's set this up to SWR again. Here you've got a knob on the side here, and you can actually set two markers. Okay, now those markers are up the top here. I don't know if you can see them in here. You can just see them moving. Yeah, you can. So, and then you can swap between the two by pressing down on, on the like the multi-function button there's quite a lot of information at the top here as well giving you sort of things like the wavelength and the um, and the frequency that you're kind of um, on tells you the step and all that sort of stuff one thing i didn't manage to do was i didn't manage to get the step to change manually it kind of auto adjusts um not sure how that works but anyway there you go um device itself is has got a, quite a lot of functions on it really it is very useful it's very well made I have to say, um, it is N types on the top, but on the side here, you do have a, a few ports. Let me get back in focus there. Um, sorry about this, I'm having to manual focus to stop the thing from hunting. Um, and on the side here, you've got an Ethernet port, you've got a DC power supply here, and it does come with a, a DC power supply. It also comes with um, there's a micro SD, uh, sorry, a micro USB port in the side here, and you've also got an SD card here on the side as well. Now, I don't believe that this can be connected to a computer. Um, I don't believe this can be connected to a computer to run on any software. I would hope that that is possible because I just think that software is definitely the way to go, and I would have liked it to run on some software. Um, quite simply because I would have liked to have done a bit of a screenshot for you so you could see the whole sort of functions. Um, but obviously I don't. I'm going to I'm going to speak to Dpace. Um, I did email them the other day um, about a completely different matter, and I'll, I'll email them again and see if they'll actually respond. They don't, they don't seem to want to respond. But anyway, there you go. Um, but it is possible to um, update firmware on this as well, which is really really good. Um, and it's also got an AF out. Now, I don't know why you would want that. I don't know what that is. I believe... Oh, you can calibrate this as well. It's important that uh, perhaps you get the calibration kit. And there, are, I, there is quite a flash calibration kit that's available. It's about 100 quid, something like that. It's not cheap. Um, but like I said before, I, I'm kind of toying with the idea whether or not I should maybe sell the um the vnas i have and actually um, rely on one of these um i mean i've got one vna uh, the mrs one but like i say it works on the computer really really well and uh, to be honest with you it was a really useful device even for tuning those that cavity um just so you know that the repeater um is actually functioning um to a degree, the, the digital side isn't working. I've actually got, uh, somewhere around here, I've actually got the, the digital brains 
which I didn't actually put on um, at the moment. We're trying to break it down into small sort of tasks, get one part working properly, and then then we'll kind of move on because what we're finding every time I make a change, if I make too many change, I don't know what uh, changes. I don't actually know what uh, what had what effect. So we're kind of breaking it down into small sort of chunks at the moment. Um, there are a few things I'd like to get going, but this, this meter is not going to help me much. But I hope that the meter has helped me tune the, the cavity and everything seems to be working fine. It seems to be OK. It seems a bit down on range. However, I think that's down. It's got something to do with the antenna. We, we, we're, we're, we're trying to get to the bottom of that, but that's another story. Um, but uh, yeah, so with the help of this little meter, I've managed to tune a... A cavity. I've borrowed this, obviously, um, from work, um, and um, yeah, it's not cost a single penny. So yeah, really, really good. And if in the future, you know, sort of, I were doing it again, maybe I would. I mean, I would like to say I'd purchase one of these, but the thing is, unless you're going to do it a fair amount, but would I use one of these for anything else? Would I use it for? You know for tuning antennas and stuff like that well the answer is yes it, it is has that function and it, it does look like it would would work so there you go thanks for watching and uh i hope that seeing this may may um if you're looking for a vna that you might consider it um because it's a really really good thing um yeah very very good but just don't buy it on the manual because <laughs> the manual like i said is complete junk thanks for watching see you soon bye bye